What is going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rage back with another Outriders World Slayer video to bring to you and today we're going to be doing a very different build. One that's anomaly power focused but is definitely geared towards actually shooting your guns and will definitely reward the marksman type players that are out there that are pretty much accurate and able to hit those critical shots very consistently. Before we get into it make sure you have dropped a like and a subscribe on the channel, it really does help the channel out and let's start getting right into it. Alright, so first and foremost, we always like to look into the gear, but in actual fact, what we're actually going to do is look into the pack tree first. The reason why is because the pack tree is the main focus as to what about this build. So if we quickly go into our class and we actually have a look into the packs, you'll notice that we've gone for bottom tree when it comes to overseer. Now the reason why is because we are looking at this capstone, but let's say let's get our way, let's work our way forward, let's explain it all the way through, and then everything that's going to be happening after that is going to feed straight into it rather than actually have some mystery about it. So the first thing we want to pick up is is the Undying. The Undying gives us every 5% of our missing health, increases our weapon leech and our skill leech by 5%. Pretty much bog standard, very, very good over on the thing. It just means that basically the lower health that you are, uh, the easier it is to be able to actually fill yourself and top yourself back up uh, because obviously you're doing, you're getting even more leech, whether you're doing actual weapon damage or whether you're doing skill damage, you're able to actually heal yourself a bit more consistently, similar to how the, the Technomancer is able to intrinsically heal. If we go from there and we actually go over to Override, uh, the reason why we're picking this one up is because we are going for Anomaly Power, even though this is a Firepower technically uh, kind of focused build. And the reason why is because we want to increase our Anomaly Power by 100% of our Skill Leech and it's easy to go into Skill Leech. Our current bonus is currently sitting at 50%, but you can increase this even further and it will go even higher as soon as you activate some of your skills to be able to actually proc some of your class tree. Going up the next one, we have Apothecary, which uh, I don't necessarily rate because I do think that 5 seconds is a very long time to actually get yourself a full heal. But just know that because of the amount of damage you will be doing in one single trigger of the capstone of this, uh, you will always instantly heal. And this will also instantly heal all uh, players that are around you to full health every single 5 seconds. So as long as you're actually working the build as it should be doing, you will be able to keep yourself alive every single 5 seconds, top yourself back up to full pretty good. Uh, obviously this does counteract the uh, the idea of the undying though, uh, so it does mean that every five seconds you will technically reset yourself back down, uh, but obviously you know that's something that you can work around and the five seconds is a decent amount enough time to be able to lose a little bit of health to actually get that back. Moving down, we have Hastened Influence, where reduce in remaining cooldown of one of your skills by 0.5 seconds for every status that's removed by you or applied to an enemy by any kind of player that's currently on the team. The reason why this is going to be useful is because we are using things like Blighted Rounds to be able to apply Toxic, and we also plan to use Cold Snap to be able to apply Freeze. And the reason why this is good is because this allows us to be able to get some of our skills back really, really quickly. We are using another skill called Scrapnel, and Scrapnel, while it doesn't inflict any statuses by itself with this build, will actually come back really, really quickly, uh, especially is uh, like in the in the meantime in the downtime of the uh, the cooldown of the next node that we're going to be looking at so scrap is a really good way to actually still spread out some damage and with hastened influence we can quickly get those skills back up to full and ready to be able to proc and be able to co consistently drop off some uh, co some cold snaps as well as actually using our scrap to be able to inflict damage and lastly, and this is the main focus of this build because it genuinely is so good, and as you saw on the thumbnail, one of the developers was just amazed as to how strong this actually can be, is going to be Burrowing Charge. Burrowing Charge means that critical shots inject enemies with an explosive charge for 5 seconds, dealing 250% of anomaly power as damage upon the next critical shot taken. This says it has a 5 second cooldown. Now the main thing to really take away from this is the fact that that 5 second cooldown is per enemy. This means that you can actually proc Burrowing Charge over and over over and over again as long as you keep changing targets and this allows us to be able to actually deal with mobs of enemies uh, just pretty much quickly because we're in over well we're doing over 20 mil damage every single activation of burrowing charge uh, to every single enemy that actually gets to get this afflicted because of how we actually are stacking up our anomaly power in the first place now that 5 second cooldown does mean that uh, obviously when it comes to certain elites or certain bosses, if they take more than one of these, you do have to wait that 5 seconds to be able to then actually uh, be able to proc another one. And also the fact that uh, with, with how, how this works off of critical shots, it does mean that when you actually stack up some of the buffs, which we're going to be going on in a second, it does mean that you will actually proc this before you actually get your gear yourself up to max and ramp yourself all the way up. Uh, so obviously it, do, it will take a second one in some cases for uh, some, some enemies that actually have more than enough health but just know that once you are fully ramped up and you consistently keep yourself active and all that kind of good stuff burrowing charge is going to be doing insane amounts of damage and we're going to explain as to how we're going to be able to ramp up to those big damage numbers in the first place 
All right, going from there, let's just quickly touch on the Ascension Tree, because the Ascension is just really easy to be able to get out of the way. So you primarily want to fill up your Anomaly Power Joe or your Anomaly Tree in the first place, and you definitely want to go for Anomaly Damage first, and then from there go into your Resistance Pierce, and then go into your Anomaly Power. I would probably recommend either going for Skill Leech next, because obviously that is a direct feed straight back into Anomaly Power, or picking up Armor Pierce to be able to give yourself additional Resistance Pierce to then give you additional Anomaly Power, which we'll go into in the second when we actually have a look into the Armor. The only other thing to really note of is that after you've actually filled these kind of trees over here, you definitely want to make your way over to Proas. And the reason why is because you want to give yourself a bit as much magazine size as possible to be able to help you so you don't have to reload as much when it comes to in-game. You'd want to do more damage against elites as well. And the other two that are really kind of important that really do help you out are going to be critical damage and critical chance. Critical chance more so because that obviously that allows you to be able to have some standard uh, baseline kind of increase to your stat to give yourself that random critical chance. Uh, so when you actually have that it means that you're able to uh, not when every like I think it's like a standard of five percent chance uh, when you actually hit an enemy in a non-critical area you're able to proc uh, a critical shot with this thing on top of that it will actually increase your chances so you don't always have to go for the head or you don't have to always hit the critical shot and it makes it more likely that that's going to happen. Covering the class tree though, the class tree is pretty much going to be one of my main recommendations for bog standard when it comes to uh, anomaly power increases and that's obviously you go in bottom tree and then you want to be able to grab something to be able to increase the vulnerability uh, of a certain enemy as well. So what you want to do is obviously grab as much anomaly field nodes as possible and obviously you can see how many we really are picking up. The other important things to be able to grab are going to be your resistance pierce and the reason why is because obviously that allows more damage to be able to go through but it also increases your anomaly power on top of that. You definitely want to grab the capstone because we are using Scrapnel to be able to trigger Tech Bond to be able to give ourselves another 50% increase to our anomaly power. We are also using Adrenalizing Antenna because we are planning to use Blighted Rounds and that allows us to be able to get a 30% increase to our anomaly power as well. And the last one that's really kind of interesting to be able to grab is Heavy Absorption. The reason why is because we have gone for that bottom tree and because we are giving ourselves 100% of our skill leech into anomaly power, activating an ordnance skill like Scrapnel will give us a standard 15% increase to our skill leech which gives us a 15% increase to our anomaly power. So all of a sudden chucking out a Scrapnel means that we are giving ourselves a minimum of 65% when it comes to anomaly power as well. The other thing to really note is going to be obviously Wipeout to be able to actually help finish off some of those enemies and this really comes into play when it comes to elites and named enemies because obviously how much health they actually do have. You want to be able to actually grab Fracture to be able to increase the amount of damage uh, to enemies that have been afflicted with Freeze. And the uh, last one that's important is grabbing Exposing Toxin. The reason why we'll get into that very very shortly uh, is when we go into the, into the skills. Alright, so it is pretty much that time. Let's have a look into the skills section. Now, when it comes to the skills, the reason why we've gone for Scrapnel, Blighted Rounds, and Cold Snap is because they all play an important part when it comes to this. Scrapnel is there to be able to give us a very nice increase to our damage, and it allows us to be able to, if we ever do go into those five second cooldowns between burrowing charges on the same enemy, it allows us to be able to actually deal some damage in the meantime, but it also allows us to be able to actually proc our anomaly power increases, and that's what obviously allows us to be able to scale our anomaly power to stupid heights for burrowing charge to actually be able to apply as high of a damage in the first place. Cold Snap is there going to be primarily used for mob clearing because the main problem with burrowing charge means that you actually can't do it. Even though it does an explosive inside the enemy, it doesn't have any AoE, which means that you actually need something to be able to make sure that you do not get swamped. There is another tactic to be able to get around this, which I will cover in a second, but it's not as effective when it comes to Cold Snap. So if you can use Cold Snap and you can put Icicle Storm onto your build, which we will be covering in a second, I would highly recommend that. And then lastly, we've gone for Blighted Rounds, one to be able to trigger our Adrenalizing Antenna, but also to be able to apply our Toxic to also benefit the amount of Anomaly Damage bonuses that we're actually going to be dealing, and also increases our damage, which allows us to be able to actually do the really high burrowing charges, which you'll have seen in the gameplay that's in the background. Now before we cover the gear, I do want to actually put in a second here, because we are actually sponsored for this video, so here's a word from our sponsor. Now a quick sponsored message, if you don't have enough time, nerves or any good teammates but you still want to have all of the cool weapons, armor and mods, we suggest you visit this website www.deving.net. They boost in Destiny 2, The Division 2 and many others. Leveling, expeditions, custom streamer builds and guns with high rolls and so on. You can choose what you need. The boost works with account sharing and self play so they do everything for you without cheats or bug abuse. We have tested the service in the past ourselves and we can recommend you these guys. They can be trusted. 
This site has been working for many years and it's uh, got a lot of client reviews and payment methods. You can check this yourself and with the code Babylon, you'll have a 15% discount on all their services. If you didn't get it or you have any questions, then feel free to contact an operator. All right, so now you're back, let's have a look into the gear. So if we head over to the inventory, the main thing you wanna be able to focus on when it comes to this build are looking for two stats in particular. You wanna be able to grab armor pierce and you wanna be able to grab skills life leech. Now, when it comes to uh, the main build, the main gun that I have actually been using, you can actually use this one, which obviously primarily does focus on armor pierce and allows us to be able to use first things first to be able to increase our armor piercing even higher. Obviously, this then feeds directly straight back into uh, anomaly power. And I would highly recommend that armor pierce is actually the main one that you look out for because armor pierce gives you a bigger bonus than skills life leech uh, but you can actually grab some legendaries that actually have both so in this case we have a charred lance that comes with armor pierce and skills life leech and it's because it has a really high uh, magazine count you can actually use this to great effect now unfortunately the apocalypse mod on this with the kinetic stomp i'm not really a big fan of so i probably would look out for something a little bit better but the fact the main thing to be able to take into this is make sure you have mage's rage mage's rage is so good right now and the reason why you want to be able to have that is obviously because we are primarily an anomaly power focused build you want to stack our anomaly power as high as physically possible and that allows us to be able to actually benefit from this because then that goes straight back into our burrowing charge to be able to deal that final finishing blow other nodes that are of, of importance uh, are going to be something like Defranome. Defranome is going to be absolutely brilliant for this because it, it gives you a base and omni power increase and that allows you to be able to obviously feed straight back into all your class nodes. So obviously that is a really good choice to be able to go for. You can also use something like Fortress. Fortress is actually really, really good in this build as well because obviously it gives you some survivability and it will also increase the amount of damage. Unfortunately, I will ask you to steer clear of first things first. And the only reason why is because first things first, the way it works is actually on that first shot that you deal. Uh, when it comes to Burrowing Charge though, Burrowing Charge triggers off the second critical shot that you land, which means that you, when you actually get onto that second round to actually trigger, you will have already lost the bonus of First Things First, so therefore First Things First is not really offering you too much when it comes to this. It will help you out when you use your Scrap Nulls, uh, but that is about it, and that is not the main focus of this build, so therefore First Things First is kind of like a, like a, like a uh, misleading mod in a sense, so I wouldn't recommend actually putting it on your guns, and I would highly recommend that you go for something like Mage's Red or fortress or something like that that actually increases your base damage uh, in the first place over something like that now the other option which I did actually mention the one that's really good for taking out like groups of enemies all of at the same time you're going to want to be able to grab yourself an automatic shotgun now preferably you want the one that has a 20 round mag because this gives you a faster fire rate and the reason why you want to be able to go for that is you're able to trigger a critical shot and you want to put something like embalmer's rage on the reason why you want to be able to grab that is because for mobbing uh, burrowing charge as standard already deals more than enough damage to be able to actually take out a group of enemies uh, just in one go and what you want to do is use your uh, automatic shotgun to be able to actually trigger your embalmer's rage as soon as you've triggered a critical shot obviously the next three uh, next shots for the next three seconds are all going to be critical shots you then want to stop aiming down sights and you just want to spray rapidly all in front of you uh, just hit fire no aiming down sights or anything like that and the reason why you want to do that is because you want to hit as many enemies as possible and every single shot will then count as a critical shot which means that the second critical shot that will actually land on them doesn't have to be as long as it hits them means that you're actually detonating your burrowing charge which allows you to be able to wipe out hordes of enemies just instantly just like that as long as you can trigger Embalmer's Rage in the first place. It's a really effective method, uh, but obviously it does require you to be able to actually swap to that, and obviously you do have to make that conscious decision, and you also have to land that first critical shot with a shotgun, which is kind of on the difficult side to be able to actually do, especially for a Technomancer, so it's not a really reliable way to be able to do it. It definitely isn't as reliable as Cold Snap with Icicle Storm, but it is an alternative in case you actually want to change this playstyle into something else and take it away from you. All right, let's actually have a look into the armor. Let's cover it all off and let's get this all finalized. So the first thing you want to do uh, is preferably get yourself a helmet uh, that has anomaly power and has skills life leech. Now, the, unfortunately, with this one, you will notice straight away that anomaly echo is red uh, is currently on red, and that means I already have this in my build somewhere else. Unfortunately, that having two of these is a dead mod. So therefore, I do actually have one slot that's still kind of kicking around free. And, and in terms of my actual hunting around, this is the best I actually currently have. All the things to note are currently there are no legendary sets for the Technomancer to my knowledge that do roll with skills life leech. The last couple ones that did have that were going to be Grim Inventors 
and also torrential downpour. If you've still got a couple of those old pieces still kicking around, then by all means feel free to use those because those are going to be some of the better ones to actually use, especially torrential downpour, which we will actually be using in this video. But if you've got rid of all those, there aren't any legendary set bonuses, you definitely need to actually start farming for some purples and to be able to actually make this build as effective as it physically can be. So obviously when it comes to Anomaly's Visage, which is a legendary helmet, it's pretty good. Uh, obviously it does come with Anomaly Power, cooldown reduction skills, life leech, perfect. It also comes with Anomaly Echo, I highly recommend that you do actually have this mod in your build somewhere. But obviously I do have this twice, so therefore obviously there, there is a dead one somewhere about it. So we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later on. Unstoppable Force is absolutely crucial because obviously we're increasing our Anomaly Power by 50% of our Resistance Pierce. And we are looking to be able to increase our Resistance Pierce as high as possible a little bit later on in the build. And allows us to be able to increase our Anomaly Power by really... Uh, really high amounts as well. Painful Chill is not really a big mod on this one, so by all means, do not you do not have to have this in your build whatsoever. And that's just the Apocalypse mod that I've just rolled with. Uh, so it's it's nice to have, but it's in no way kind of like shape or form necessary to have as well. If we move on, we do have the Torrential Downpour's armor. Now, once again, like I said, this is the old set. The current new pieces that you will actually be farming will all roll with status power instead of skills life leech. So unfortunately, you won't be able to actually get these going forward in your farming ever since the patch that was a couple of weeks ago. But this one, because I still have this kicking around, this does come with things like Trap Cluster, which doubles the amount of scrap nulls that I'm able to have before they go on cooldown. I've also put to the bone on there because when we have our blighted rounds active, uh, we get anomaly damage increased by 15%, which is absolutely huge, and that allows us to be able to actually get a benefit from the uh, the increased damage when we go into using blighted rounds to be able to actually trigger the burrowing charge because that actually will affect it as well. Self medication is on there as it currently stands; it will actually refill yourself back up to full. Really nice to be able to actually give you some self sustain when it comes to the actual fight, uh, but in no way, shape, or form is this actually necessary. You definitely can have different things in this as well. Moving on, we have the, uh, the leg armor of the torrential downpours. And um, when it comes to this circular power, I do not rate this mod whatsoever. I would highly recommend that you actually get some. If you do actually get some purples, I highly recommend that you do actually swap this one out. You definitely do not need this in the build whatsoever. I do not rate this in any of any shape or form. I have put power assimilation on there to be able to increase our anomaly power by a, a, a nice chunk. And obviously, the main focus of this build is to be able to increase the amount of better anomaly power that we do have to then feed into our multipliers. So power assimilation really does that quite well. So I highly recommend that you do actually try and pick that up in the build. And then I've also got shatter on here to be able to increase the amount of damage to enemies that are frozen by 16% and this will affect burrowing charge if you actually use all of your skills in tandem. Lastly we do have the Torrential Downpour's Gloves which comes with uh, max health which unfortunately isn't ideal but it does come with skills life leech and it also does come with the rolls that I actually really want to be able to feed into this build. As standard this will come with Anomaly Echo once again uh, but I would highly recommend that you do actually swap that out if you do get a different one. I've got no resistance against the Fortify to increase our resistance pierce by 100% of our armor pierce which is why it's important to be able to have that when it comes to our ascension tree and also when it comes to our, the equipped weapon that we're actually using because then that goes straight back into resistance pierce and then that goes straight back into anomaly power to be able to increase our burrow range charge by even more uh, kind of damage as well as our anomaly power to be able to benefit from our scrap nulls. It does actually come with an arms and anomaly and I highly recommend that you do grab this because you will be doing critical shots as standard and because it triggers off the first critical shot that you actually do fire it means that you have that benefit ready to go on that second shot that you will be actually firing as well so therefore that is a huge amount of anomaly power and you definitely would be missing out if you didn't actually put that in. Lastly, we do have the boots of the Torrential Downpour because I haven't found any better purples just yet, but I, ideally I would want some Anomaly Power and Skills Life Leech, but because it comes with Skilled Life Leech, it's, it, it works for now. And I've made sure that this has Icicle Storm on there to be able to uh, give me the mobbing potential that I actually do need when it comes to this build. So every single time I detonate an enemy that's afflicted by uh, Cold Snap, they will actually then have that chain reaction to be able to finish off the rest of the enemies, and that really does help out in mobbing kind of in the scenario there. I also have supplies to be able to give me an additional mine to be able to actually throw out with our uh, scrap nulls. So that brings me up to a total of four. And then Untamed Power is kind of underrated in a way. It's, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to have this, but because we are increasing our anomaly power by stupid amounts, that also means that we can actually then use this uh, to be able to stack this up to some nice heights. And it will actually go up to the millions points of damage. So it is a nice DPS boost just from actually having this on standard. And it also allows you to be able to use your melee to be able to inflict damage as well. 
You will also note that because I am using the torrential downpour, that our scrapnels will also create cluster bombs, which mean also scales one to one with our anomaly power. And now, obviously, the, the more we increase our anomaly power, which we will be doing with burrowing charge, also means the the cluster bombs will actually do more damage as well. And it has that really nice synergy going for it. Now, in terms of mods that you can actually put onto your gear, there is one pitfall that you will actually fall into, similar to like first things first, and that's because we are using bloated rounds. Some of you will actually suggest to me why aren't using alchemical mastery. The reason why for that is because we aren't going into any status power whatsoever, apart from what's currently on our gun, and therefore 15% of that is such a small amount of power that it's just not worth it when it comes to this build. I would highly recommend that you actually do grab some multipliers instead, uh, so therefore alchemical mastery is just not really the play. If you actually do get the perfect god rolls which is going to be uh, anomaly power skills life leech and status power and you get enough pieces to be able to actually use this then by all means definitely alchemical mastery is going to be a great shout then but obviously you do need like at least about three to four pieces uh, to, including your gun to be able to actually get close to the the figure actually being a good enough uh, amount to be actually be uh, like be usable in that sense in terms of other things to be able to grab, I would highly recommend grabbing Captain Hunter. Unfortunately, I haven't got the space, and like I said, I do have a few dead mods when it comes to this build, but I would highly recommend that you do actually go out there and be able to grab a piece to be able to actually put Captain Hunter in there as well. Other things of note are going to be things like Euthanizer to be able to actually increase the amount of damage to enemies afflicted by Toxic. This will increase the amount of damage that Depleted Core will be doing. And this is also the same when it comes to Virulent Compound, which is another 10% on top of that. So I highly recommend do, do grabbing those two. And the reason why Virulent actually works quite well in this is because it, it gives us more damage to Elite, which are normally going to be the ones that actually give us the problem when it comes to the uh, when it actually comes to uh, like triggering it a second time. So I highly recommend do grabbing both of those if you do actually find space. And then the last one that I would really kind of suggest to yourself is maybe Danger Close. The reason why is because Danger Close allows us to be able to actually stack our anomaly power by 6% uh, up to uh, by, by 4 times, depending on the amount of enemies that are nearby. What you can do as a new kind of like tactic to be able to maximize the amount of damage you can do is use your cold snap to be able to immobilize some enemies, stand in the middle of them while they are still being frozen, and then use that to be able to actually give yourself the anomaly power boost to be able to land a really good uh, kind of like um, a burrowing charge to be able to maximize the amount of damage to certain elites. The, in, other, in other cases, if you if you can't find any like space for any of these, then definitely anything that can increase your anomaly power even further. There are a couple of tier two options that allow you to be able to do that, similar to like Aura of Force, for example, that allow you to be able to actually get that benefit. So I would highly recommend keeping an eye out for those mods as well. And there you have it, that is everything to do with the Burrowing Charge Pax Point and the way to be able to build around it. I hope you've learned something useful with ourselves, I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, make sure you have dropped a like and a subscribe, it really does help the channel out. And I'm definitely looking out on the, being able to try and find something that's just as useful as this, something that's a little bit quirky, something that's a little bit different, and actually you can build a like a really good build around. Uh, this is absolutely stunning when it comes to expeditions. It does do good damage when it comes to trials, but unfortunately that 5 second cooldown does hold it back a little bit, so if that ever does get changed or amended, then that's definitely something to be able to keep an eye out for because that may actually escalate this to a really good height and also this is probably the most beneficial way to be able to run firepower as it currently stands but obviously if there are any other changes in the future then obviously that may change as well anyway that just leaves me to say thank you all so much let me know in the comment section down below is this something that you would actually give a go is this something you would actually try out and is there any kind of amendments that you would probably make to this build as well that i haven't already covered as always that just leaves me to say thank you all so much thank you all to the babylonian family keep yourself safe keep yourselves well and I'll see you all on our next video.